I'm Esty and today I'm going to show you how to get those perfect grill marks using a cast iron grill pen. So I've got my cast iron grill pan here. Now cast iron is crucial to get those really nice grill marks. If you use the non-stick, you just won't have the same type of prominent marks there. And we wanna crank the heat on this to get it screaming hot before we put anything on it. You really wanna make sure that it is really, really, really hot, then we'll add our food. So just let it go for a few minutes. While our grill pan is heating up, we're just gonna prepare our chicken. I've got a few chicken cutlets over here and I'm just gonna toss them with some olive oil, and I'm using this one today, the Montreal chicken seasoning, because that's my family's favorite. And it's important when you're grilling on a cast iron grill pan to grease the food, not the pan. The pan won't stick as long as you grease the food. And we just wanna coat it all over the place, which is why we use gloves, or you could just toss everything in a Ziploc bag and smush it around. And if you want more of the flavor, you can do this a day before, you could do this a few hours in advance, but it's even good to go right away. Once your grill pan is smoking, you know that it's ready to go. You want it as hot as possible, and that's when you know it's ready. So we take our food that was greased, and we put it right on the grill pan. You can hear that sizzle. Yes, that's exactly what we want to hear. Now don't touch it. You have to let it get a nice good sear. It'll get those grill marks before we flip it. Just stay put, just leave it. Once you put the food on, walk away for just two minutes. Let it get a nice hard sear. Okay, it's starting to smell really good. I'm gonna take a quick peek and flip it over. The first time we flip it, we're flipping it in the same direction where we put it on originally. Look at those marks, beautiful. And then we let them sear for another two minutes. The same procedure as we did before, before we flip them. Although this time when we flip them, we're gonna change the direction and we're gonna rotate them. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, we're ready to flip again, but this time instead of flipping them over this way, we're gonna flip them over this way. And that's how you get that beautiful cross hatch. And keep in mind, when you're putting the protein down onto the grill pan to allow room for you to turn them this way. So we're gonna give it another sear for two minutes and then turn them over and do the same thing. Okay, we're ready for our last and final flip. Look at those beautiful grill marks. You see, if you move it around to check to make sure and you don't kind of keep it steady, you won't have these pronounced marks. But the fact that we left it there for two minutes, let it get a nice sear. We've got these gorgeous, gorgeous payoffs, and you can do this with vegetables, you can do this with steak. This is amazing, and just because winter is rolling around doesn't mean that grill season is over. You can grill all winter long. Now these were seared for another two minutes, the final two minutes, and we're going to remove them to an oven safe plate. Notice I'm using new tongs because these are cooked. You don't want to use anything that touched the raw chicken on cooked chicken and we're removing them to an oven safe dish and we're gonna check the internal temp of the chicken because how do you know it's cooked through? Well, technically you can cut into it or you can just check with a thermometer. I've got my instant read thermometer here and you can get these for like $10 on Amazon sometimes or $20 and it's just to probe the inside of the chicken. We're at 102 here, that's not cooked through. According to the USDA, chicken needs to be at 165 to be cooked through. We didn't have to cut it, we didn't have to lose any juices, we know that it needs more time, but it doesn't need more time on the grill. So we're going to put it into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes and then recheck if it's cooked through. As soon as these hit 165, we pull them out of the oven. Now the time in the oven really depends on how thick the cutlets are, so using a thermometer is kind of crucial. You just wanna keep checking until it hits 165, then you pull them out and they'll stay juicy, even if you reheat them the next day or use them cold in a chicken wrap or anything. I'll show you what they look like inside. Let's take that one. Oh yeah. Look how juicy that is in there. Oh yeah. 
Mmm. Perfect every time. You can find more easy recipes just like this on kosher.com.